First off, Dancing with the Stars last night. Real Housewives star Phaedra was eliminated. So the good news is, unlike some past seasons, they actually legitimately voted off the person that, in my opinion, was the weakest dancer. Um, especially for um, a female, she's she's quite um, inflexible, which just makes you know that soft, fluid movement a little tougher for her. Okay, number two, my prediction from the jump was this little Chandler Disney star, superstar dancer. She is going to run away with this program. I stand by that. We'll see how this pans out in the end. Okay, next up, my prediction for next week being voted off. Um, Dwight Johnson, the NBA player. Um, I love every single person remaining, including Phaedra. You know, everyone's got a great attitude. They're dancing their best as a competitor. Our hearts just go out to them as ballroom dancer because we all been there, right? As a ballroom dancer, I've been on that comp floor waiting for the awards and that soul crushing moment, you know, you don't win and you were hoping you would or, you know, maybe politics come into play with the judging and, you know, these things happen. And so, you know, I just wish they would all win because they're trying so hard and I love it. Um, okay, next up. Um, broken pelvis update guys. It has been almost a month. Um, I had a follow-up appointment yesterday with my orthopedic surgeon. Um, as you know, they were not able to go in there and put screws in and stuff to put this stuff together because they felt going inside of that socket and cutting everything up would do even more damage. So I'm doing it the El Natural way. Um, so they did need to do some follow-up x-rays to make sure because they are not screwed together that the bones are aligning kind of the puzzle pieces are knitting in where they should um and the good news is everything is looking great they can see it's knitting together there was one exception where it's pulled apart where my gluteus muscle is pulling on the bones so they're like you know what it's perfectly aligned but there's still a space in there and so they gave me the governor's reprieve. They said, you know what? You've got some pretty strong butt muscles and it's pulling that off of there. So I got a six week break from physical therapy. And I love that guys, because I'm definitely feeling, the, feeling that physical therapy, not in that pleasing dancing way. Um, I am teaching a little bit, but honestly, the pain in dancing is extremely minimal. It's all self-inflicted. Um, because I can feel, I'm, I'm aware of my body, my range of motion, and can position myself in a way that doesn't hurt. I'm booking people that are a little bit more experienced dancers. So, you know, I'm confident they're not going to you know, put their weight on me. Um, but uh, the PT, you know, they just, they give it to you. And I got to do the reps even, you know, to the limit of my pain and such. And, and um, uh, so anyway, I'm looking forward to that relief. Um, and just getting a little more sleep because I know mama's been looking haggard lately. <laughs> just hard to stay asleep when you're hurt. Um, okay, next up. Um, today's uh, primary topic. Where do these pros go after graduating, so to speak, from this program? Because this is not a life plan, guys. It's not like, well, I'm in a CPA and I'm doing that till I'm 65, you know. Dancing is a little bit more um, of, especially in show business, friends. You know, and it's, it's a small window. Um, and so a couple of these pros um, have actually made a successful go of it using this program as a vehicle for kind of long-term um, media stardom. Um, so Derek um, and Julianne have perfect examples. They are slaying it on this program and doing things off this program to um, fitness um, programs, uh, traveling uh, shows, all the good juju. I love that. Um, but where on earth do these other pros go? So I'm going to break that down for you today. Um, many just go back to teaching. Okay. So editor Brian Fortuna, his mom is always posting pictures of him dancing at her studio on our Facebook page. Emma Slater, Charlotta Jorgensen, she's teaching out of LA, um, has been for years before the program, Corky Ballas. So these people were full-time teachers before this program came, out, came on, and they are very fortunate to have gone back into that career. Because unfortunately, when you dump your students to go on this program, you are not allowed to dance with anyone else. You gotta move down to where the star is, dump your clientele, and honestly, guys, it doesn't matter how amazing of a teacher you are. If you 
um, student dump your students, they're going to find a teacher that'll show up for them, right? doesn't matter how good you are. And then at that point, you know, if the person's good enough, they're good enough, right? So um, I'm very happy that they're back into teaching and successful at that. Okay, many have gone on to open their own dance studios. The reason being, you kind of get to ride the, the coattails of this program after your season is done. So they definitely have an added, um, I'll call it star power to their name that they can tap onto a studio. Um, and then the students will come just because they want to meet so-and-so, right? Um, and so here is a list of pros I know of, at least, that have opened their own studios, okay? So Karina Smirnoff, Jesse DeSoto, Tony Dovolani. As a matter of fact, guys, he is the international dance director for Fred Astaire. Um, Gleb Sev uh, Sevchenko, Jonathan Roberts. Alex Mazzo, Fabian Sanchez, Anna Trebinskaya, Ina Breyer, um, Kim Johnson. She's also a podcaster now, too. Um, now, Cheryl Burke did open her own studio. Unfortunately, that went under during COVID. But um, I love that they can parlay this into something other than five minutes of fame, you know? <laughs> okay, next up. Um, many of these people, although they do not make a go of it successfully on TV or, or movies, you know what? A lot of them go into performance because, again, they have the name recognition. So there's a number of, um, I'll say, like traveling dance shows that they can do, whether they travel with the program itself, uh, because I have been to that live show where tr Dancing with the Stars kind of has its own traveling dog and pony show but they've also done their own side hustle okay um because they in themselves are dancers we as dancers all know each other we got all our friends so you know we can staff up that show honestly probably easier than dancing with the stars can um because in my opinion it's a little easier um to, to you have to put in less work to do a show with a pro i i can do that in you know a couple hours and whip one out that looks pretty darn good um, you know, when you're training these stars from scratch, it's just it's just a lot more of a time investment. Um, I would say a physical investment as well, because you know I want them to look their best. My students gonna rock it out there, so sometimes I'm really you know, manipulating them into into just you know really working hard to to show their best. So. Um, People that have done gone on to do these um, kind of traveling shows, um, Max and Val Shermarikovsky. Um, and also, speaking of, of Val, you do see these pros sometimes come in and out um, on different seasons. So they might leave for a while and then the show will invite them back when they see a partner, a, a star that they think you know would be a complimentary match in terms of size or age or, or whatever. Um, a lot of stuff, guys, just based on looks in Hollywood, but I go into that in some other videos and my involvement in media down there. Anyway, um, so they have a dance company called Dance With Me. Um, Louis Van Amstel as well has done his own dog and pony show on the road. Um, Mark Ballas, um, he is in a, a band. Um, he is performed on Broadway. So he's kind of, um, kind of, exiting a little bit kind of the dance focus and going more into performance, which is great. This day and age as a dancer, that's totally an option for you. If you have, I'll say, kind of the, the look and the personality to pull that off. Um, Lacey Schwimmer, um, also traveling, also teaching. Um, and guys, you know, this is, I saw her dance when she was just a teenager. And that you could tell when she was like, 14, this kid was going to be a rock star, and she sure is, so I'm loving her success. Um, also, I mentioned um, Cheryl Burke opening her own dance studio. You know, that fell through, but she ended up going on this TV show, Dance Moms, and replacing Abby Lee Miller when that studio owner went to jail. And I don't like Abby Lee Miller, by the way, that personality, that's a whole nother video of abusive pros because apparently that just doesn't happen in, in the ballroom world. Dislike. Okay, next up. Um, we do have um, a strong um, LDS presence on the floor. So you might, rec um, in the vernacular, you might know this is the, the Mormon church. Um, very prominent um, on this program as well in the performance area. I actually have some pretty solid theories on this. I think I'm gonna dive into that in another video for you um, in terms of, of why ballroom dancing, dancing is popular in that subculture and as well why the performance aspect, the media aspect 
um, really disproportionately draws that population segment um, into the program. Um, personally, I don't care what someone's religious beliefs are. I just want to see a smiling face, having fun, dancing well, spreading the joy. Um, and they're all bringing that to the table, friends. Um, okay. So kind of, um, there are some of the LDS ladies that have moved on to the more traditional um, housewife role that just, in my outside observation, guys, I'm not LDS, but that does seem to be in the United States um, a little bit um, more statistically common in that religion. So um, guys, Ashley Del Grosso, um, I've known her for eons. You know, she is now married, four kids. Um, just doing great. Um, Lindsay Arnold, um, one of my, probably my very closest um, friend in the ballroom dance competitive world, you know, shared, shared hotel rooms all sorts of times, did each other's hair. Andrea Hale, she um, she is teaching guys, but she is now married with a kid. And it's funny, our lives kind of moved in tandem. We got married about the same time. We had our daughters about the same time. I think they're both the same age. So um, that's kind of fun just to see them, you know, living their best life. Um, okay, next up. Some have gone on to, to run, um, organize and sell, I'll say fitness programs. I mentioned Louis Van Am still. Um, Sasha Farber does online um, dance courses. He has been invited back to the program, but you know, everyone's got a side hustle, guys, because again, you can't ride that pony forever. Um, Kim Johnson um, owns a fitness studio. Um, she, I think she also does a podcast now. Um, okay, next up, costume design. So many pro ballroom dancers actually transition into costume design um, because it is a very specific, you know, artistic and cultural thing that just not like a regular tailor can whip out a ballroom dance dress. I've seen people do it. Bad idea, guys. Um, and it's a nice way to kind of still be fully immersed in that ballroom dance, dance sport world, go to the comps, make a living, and then not have to rely so much on your body. Because um, as I've shared, as we get older, um, you know, things just tend to break a little easier. <laughs> a little more healing time. Guys, I don't plan on retiring until I'm 100 years old, but that's my grand mastery of a plan. Um, so costume design, Nick Kosovich, Chelsea Hightower, Whitney Carson. She actually does an athleisure line, but I love that she's able to transition that star power into that name brand recognition to schlep her, you know, athleisure stuff. That is awesome. I want that. Um, Alan Burston does his own clothing line. I don't think that's dance kind of sport wear, but same thing. Love that they're getting into fashion and just able to spread their wings and pursue additional passions. Um, and finally, many of the these folks have gone on to star in Dancing with the Stars in other countries. So I shared another video, you know, listing all of those countries that have their own version of this, this uh, show. And many of my friends have actually done it in multiple countries. Now, certainly if they came out of that country, naturally when they go back, you know, and you know, oh, I grew up in Lithuania, I'm going to that country to do the show. But many of them have starred in all sorts of shows, you know, South Africa, Philippines, you name it. And they, did, they weren't born there, but um, they have kind of been able to parlay that star power into, you know, some more... Um, I'll say media exposure in other countries. I don't know what the pay for that is. I imagine it's probably best um, in Hollywood in the United States because there's some big deep pockets down there. But you know what? They are enjoying what they're doing. And from um, all appearances from my, you know, end on, as an outside, it looks like they're doing really well um, financially and performance wise and, and just happiness wise. Um, okay, so Tristan McManus, Dimitri Chaplin, Iveta, she's been on this program for years, actually, in other countries, Sharna Burgess. Um, so, guys, um, that is my summary for today. I look forward to seeing you first thing tomorrow morning for some more things ballroom dance. And, hey, let us know in the comments, um, who do you think is going to get voted off next week and who do you think should win? And also, guys, I am but one person. I do not personally know and I'm not personally close with every single star dancer as a pro who's ever been on that program. So if you know um, a former star on that show, pro star, um, and know what they're up to, hey, share that in the comments below because I love hearing that too. Okay, thank you for joining me today for some more things ballroom dance. I will see you first thing in the morning with another hot ballroom dance tea. Toodles, guys. Bye.